things have gotten much, much more dire in the newest chapter of Black Clover. Coming off the last chapter, where we saw Mary Oleona, after having watched dozens of her squad mates sacrifice their lives in order to protect her from the now paladin mad scientist Morse, dove headfirst into an all or nothing attack, planning to burn away her own life as long as it meant taking Morse down with her. All while her brother Fugoyan could do nothing but watch in horror as he was stuck protecting the civilians of the Clover Kingdom from a horde of angels. And that is where the manga left us as it then went on a three week break. And as the manga has finally returned, we expected to pick back up right where we left off, getting to see if this would truly be the final stand of Mary Oleona. And this, this has actually been a pretty nerve wracking three weeks for me because Mary Oleona is one of my top three favorite characters in the entire series, might even be one of my top 10 characters in all of anime and manga. And I really, really, really wanted to know if she was actually going to make it out of this fight alive or this actually would be her final moments. But instead, Tabata once again pivoted our expectations and moved our focus over towards what's currently going on with the Silva family, leaving me and the other fans of Mario Leona desperately waiting for the reveal of her ultimate fate. Honestly, this is something that Tabata has consistently done with his writing throughout all of Black Clover, and I honestly should not be surprised that he did again at this point. But as disappointed as I was, once I started to read the chapter, I immediately became hyped all over again, because if you thought the Crimson Lion Kings were having a hard time, then the Silver Eagles are going through absolute hell. And as the first thing we see in this chapter is their captain, Nozel Silva, being stabbed through the stomach by his own mother. And then to make things even worse, then we pan out, revealing that what looks like the entirety of the Silver Eagle squad has been wiped out all by this one lone paladin leaving only Nero Solid and a semi-alive Nozelle, the only survivors. I mean, at least with the Crimson Lions, Mario, Leona, and Morris were essentially fighting at equal strength, so we knew that if Ugoyan were able to break away and join the fight, it would almost be a guaranteed victory for the two of them. Hell, throw Leo into the mix as well, and there's no question that Morris would have been taken down relatively easily. But even with the three strongest members of the Silver Eagles and the entirety of their squad, they still couldn't even land a single scratch on Aesir. Which I mean, in their defense, it is Aesir Silva, the person who trained Mary Oleona, the current strongest captain in the entire Clover Kingdom by miles, and who is now much more powerful as a paladin than she ever was when she was alive. The Silver Eagles just kinda got the short end of the stick on this one. And it doesn't help that possibly their second strongest member, Nebra, absolutely refuses to fight, not able to bring herself to harm her own mother. While on the other hand, Solid, who is willing to fight his mom, is unable to even get close to landing a single hit, relenting in just how weak he truly is despite believing that he had gotten so much stronger since his fight with Noel back during the Royal Knight Selection Exam. And as if this whole thing wasn't sad enough, what Aesir says to the two of them just cuts even deeper, saying that had the two of them not let themselves become so engrossed in their hatred for Noel, they could have become much, much, much stronger than they currently are, and that it is all her fault for them turning out this way because she just didn't love them enough. And hearing that from their own mother, the person they held in such high regard for all these years, the whole reason why they tortured and were relentless to Noel her entire life, that must have been crushing. And while I imagine that I and most of the fandom don't have any love for the two of them, I still couldn't help but feel just a little bit sad for them. Now that being said, I actually do wonder if there actually is someone who is a fan of those two characters. There has to be at least one in the entirety of the Black Over fandom. So hey, quick experiment. If you are that one person who actually is a fan of Nebra and Solid, let me know. Comment down below. Now, even though it saddens they here to do this, she knows killing her children will allow them to be reborn in the new world that Lucius creates, allowing her family to finally be reunited completely. Though it does bring into question if they'll even get to be reborn in the first place, because as we found out, those who Lucius deems to be either too weak or unwanted are combined and turned into the angels that we see flying around. And while I'm sure Nozelle will make the cut, Nebra and Solid are, let's be honest, they're kind of still up in the air. Because Nozelle is a renowned captain of the Clover Kingdom Magic Knights, while the two of them are just more like background characters with actual names. But none of that matters because just in the nick of time, just as Aesir was about to finish off all three of her children, Noelle takes the stage ready to fight alongside her siblings against their mother. Who, by the way, is technically meeting her for the very first time. I know she did technically meet her spirit back during the spade arc, but that was only her spirit and this is actually her meeting her for the first time in the flesh. 
And with her brand new contract of beast Leviathan by her side, in the very next chapter, we're in for one of Noelle's best fights yet. But what has me even more interested in the next chapter is what all this means for her brother Solid. Because in this chapter, Tabata made a point of focusing on him and showing his development throughout the entire manga. Starting off as the one who torments Noelle the most, to being then completely overpowered and humiliated by her during the Royal Knight selecting exam and the Elf Arc. And then finally making strides to improve himself during the Spade Saga, even though he didn't really get to do much. I mean, he did manage to block an attack from the ancient demon that was revived and attacked the Clover Kingdom during that saga, so I guess that is kind of something. Despite actually not getting much screen time, Solid actually has slightly grown as a character throughout the entire series. But the bit of character development we have still yet to see from him is him reconciling with Noelle. Because after the defeat of Megakua and her curse being lifted, Nozelle was finally able to reveal to his siblings the truth about their mother's death, absolving Noelle of any fault. And now, knowing the truth of it all, Nibra and Solid more than likely want to try and bury the hatchet with their sister, but are just too awkward and prideful to do so. And given that Noelle is almost certain to lose his fight against Aesir, this could be his last chance to do so, stepping in to take a fatal blow for his sister, sacrificing himself as a way to atone for everything they've done to her throughout the entire series. And if one of her siblings actually does step up and actually takes a hit for Noelle, story-wise, it has to be Solid who does it. You see, Nozelle and Noelle have long since reconciled and have restarted their family dynamic. We've even seen that Nozelle has all along actually really cared about Noelle and has been trying to keep her safe this entire time. Sure, he's been kind of a dick about it in the beginning, but he was ultimately trying to keep her protected. And when it comes to Nebra, let's be honest, she's basically been non-existent for the entirety of the series. It's almost like Tabata kind of completely forgot that she exists as a character. And while the same can be said about Solid, Tabata has at least given him a little focus in the story, developing him little by little. And him dying to protect Noelle would actually complete his character development. It would also serve as a catalyst to drive both Nozelle and Noelle to reach their full potential, allowing Noelle to fight alongside both Asta and Yuno against Lucius, and Nozelle to actually gain the strength to take on and defeat their mother. Which will no doubt be a very, very exciting fight, but for that, we'll have to wait until we reach the second half of this final saga.